Welcome once again to facilitation exercise for today on ISL 142 titled Islam and Interreligious Dialogue. I hope you recollect what dialogue is. In our last lesson, we looked at dialoguing in the area of religion as it concerns religion. Today, we want to be looking at some other aspect of dialogue, some, some attitude that practitioners of religion now inject into dialoguing, like um, commercialization of religion and some other uh, attitudes, on, on wholesome attitudes. So, my name is Professor Mustafa Adi Rahim, your regular anchor. And if you are ready for today's exercise, be prepared and let's go. Yes. Uh ISL 142 Islam and Interreligious Dialogue. Uh, this is a continuation of our last lesson on the dialogue, interreligious dialogue. What are the things expected of the practitioners of interreligious dialogue? Uh, our learning outcome for today should be that at the end of the lesson students should be able to define what commercialization of religion is all about then students should be able to state the effects of such practice describe the negative role of the press in religious matters and finally students should be able to explain the place of sharia an interreligious dialogue. What is commercialization of religion? Commercialization of religion, of religion is to using religion to make money. That is just the, the simple explanation of it. Capitalizing on religious uh, practices or beliefs or whatever to exploit and to make money. So, commercialization of religion comes naturally. It is natural. And it is almost unavoidable that to, to have it. Because uh, people are different from one another. So, we see so many people that engage in it. And it is, and before you know it, some people do it unconsciously. Someone is called a man of God on the assumption that he possesses spiritual power to pray to God on behalf of others. You see so many people because they think that they have special spiritual endowment and whatever they say or in form of prayer comes to pass. So they will capitalize on that to assume the position of a man of God. So people with various problems therefore contact men of God for spiritual solutions. People that are barren, people that uh, are seeking for maybe a uh, solution to their uh, health issues, people that are poor, and so many people who believe that solution to their problem lies in the hand of men of God. So they will rush down to them and explain to them and ask them to pray for them. And if by chance or eventually if they, they have solution to such problems, so they, will, they give out gratifications of various kinds. To who? To the men of God. They show appreciation. So, as a result of this, it was later realized that a man of God can make fortunes from gratification freely. So, they believe that, ah, this is a new grant. This is a new fertile land through which they can become rich. So, as a result of that, of that we have so many people now uh, calling themselves, converting themselves into men of God. They assume the title man of God. So, and many houses of God now emerge with unholy practices. For them to attract, to attract uh, 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 people or congregation, so they do all kinds of heinous things. Heinous things. 
to attract people. Some people commit murder. Some people go into fetish. Some people uh, engage in so many dubious things to attract uh, people or followers into their holy house of God, according to them. And gradually, through that means, religion became a commercial venture. So, as we have it in our society today, we see that uh, religion, religion has been turned into things different, they are thing differently. You see so many people uh, using the name of religion to dupe, using the name of uh, God to, to, to perpetrate all kinds of evil in an attempt to get rich quick. So that is uh, one aspect. Then another one, we are looking at the, the role of the press. By the press, attention is focused on radio, television, and uh, newspapers these days. So, and uh, the mass media are supposed to entertain, to inform, and educate people. That is their uh, professional uh, callings, duties. To entertain, to inform, and to educate. So the mass media, the radio, television, newspaper, and other, other ones like that, eh? the practitioners have professional ethics that govern their practices. So they have special training on how to ent entertain people or, or to, to, uh, how to inform people and how to educate people. So if you want to listen to what is going on around the world, you turn to the radio or you watch the television or you read newspapers. You read the newspapers. So, news are disseminated through those uh, means. But many of them now have abandoned ethics of their profession in favor of propagating fake religious activities. You see, there are a lot of propaganda uh, by the media houses. So, where, pro uh, for, for example, where we have the managing director of that uh, uh, media house. Uh, as a believer in a particular religion, he will capitalize on the opportunity he has as a practitioner of uh, uh, media to what? To propagate fake religious uh, news, fake religious activities. And this is what we have in our society now, and that is causing a lot of problems. Then, Sharia in dialogue. Sharia, by definition, is the law and an open way which God, the creator of man, has laid for him. So that is the, the law of God in Islamic terminology. Sharia is, is, the, is, the, is the law given by Allah so to, to, to guide mankind. The usefulness, e effectiveness, and efficiency of Sharia in the life of man are attributed to the originator of Sharia himself, which, which is God. So, for Sharia to work, to be useful, to be ef efficient, so it is the design of God. You can attribute all those ones to God. But it is God that, that created man and that knows best what man needs to, to survive. So, man did not create himself. We all know that. It is God that created man. So, therefore, man cannot make law, perfect law for himself. There is no way man can make perfect law for himself a law that will that will be suitable for the day-to-day -day activities of man it is because of that deficiency that we have our constitutions being re being reviewed day in day out you see we have different constitutions in nigeria for instance and we have experienced a lot of decrease different degrees during the military era because uh, uh we are human beings and all those decrees and constitutions are made by man so, and they are not perfect. But the one that is perfect is the one put down by God for the advantage of man. So, the actions of man had created for him hardship on a number of occasions. What man does always creates problem for him. It lands him in problems all the time. Hence, he needs someone who knows him accurately to introduce him or to himself and prescribe for him guidelines to use in the conduct of his affairs. That is, some, a man needs uh, a, a perfect way of life, a perfect order. So, and that can only be provided by God himself. 
and that is Sharia for you. And uh, that is what Sharia stands for. It stands for uh, the guidance of man and how to uh, ensure that man lives a perfect, uh, maybe uh, uh, a comfortable life in life. So that has been our presentation. To summarize it, we have looked at the commercialization of religion, what it means. And I told you that it means making money out of religion, using money, using religion to make money or exploiting uh, people unconsciously by, uh, through the means of uh, religion. So the effect of commercialization of religion on the society has also been discussed. It's, it's always bring negative uh, things to the society because you see so many people now hiding under religion to perpetrate so many evils. So, so see many uh, houses of God these days. You, you, you hear what happens there. Killings, uh, duping, raping, and all these things just uh, to, to, to exploit people in the name of religion. So the negative role of the press has also been uh, discussed. So uh, likewise, the uh, place of Sharia in interreligious dialogue. That is, it is Sharia that one use, uses, if you are a Muslim, it will be your base of argument when you are giving, uh, when you are dialoguing with others. So you don't just say anything outside the Sharia. So because Sharia stands as the guide, as the law of God, which is supreme. So before you engage in anything, uh, any relig uh, religious dialogue, you have to be conversant with Sharia provision to, to I mean, to, in order to, 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 to present your views. So that is uh, the summary of our presentation for today. So let's meet again during the next class to continue with our discussion. Thank you.